Hey everybody, I'm Jace with RMUS, and today what we're doing is giving you kind of a practical look at the real-time robotics HERA, how it's configured, and what it actually looks like when you're out operating in the field. Again, this is the real-time robotics HERA. It's outfitted with several payloads, which we'll highlight in a little bit, but just a little bit about the aircraft itself. We do have an integrated battery system, removable, that's a smart battery charging system, has its own platform, it's very effective. And usually we can expect with this configuration, somewhere between 25 to 30 minute flight time, depending on what you attach to the drop system. Again, more on that in just a little bit. But it features all the specs that you would expect to have, the long, long and high quality video transmission and remote control distance. It's really a very capable platform. But additionally, what you can see is, yes, this is a large platform. Again, part of it is weight, hence the drop system. It is capable of weight up to 33 pounds, however, that severely limits your flight time. Every pound that you add to it is obviously going to decrease your flight time. But the type of configuration we're talking about here, the types of thing we would like to place on it, an emergency blanket, bottles of water, maybe radios, rations, or something like that, this is capable of handling that and doing it very well. And again, what you might notice is that yes, this is a large platform. However, what we have here is a folded Hera aircraft. This is the same aircraft, only it's folded without the, without the battery already installed on it. And what you can also see is, again, this case is actually the case that the Hera comes in, aside from batteries, but you'll notice that this case is, it's not a massive case. Usually with a large platform, you'd expect something that's very cumbersome. This is really very small for the size of aircraft it is, and it's very easy to manage. So now, taking a look at the payloads, let's look at each of these individually. First off, on this side, what we have here is what's called the Hera site. This is going to be your primary imaging payload. This payload features a Sony 9520 core, which is 1080p up to 60 frames per second, as well as a 30 times optical zoom. It also features a thermal payload that is a FLIR core at 640 by 512 resolution. So it's a very capable and high quality thermal sensor. Everything you would expect from FLIR. Additionally, the other thing that we have on here is a laser rangefinder. Next up, we have the drop system. Again, we talked about this, depends on what you put on it, it will eat into your flight time, but this drop system is actually capable of handling up to six individual drops. Now you could drop them all at once, or they just operate sequentially. So you can do six unique drops, depending on your mission needs. Finally, the speaker spotlight combination. Again, something that's a little bit unique. Having this much capability on one platform is not very common when you're looking at something of this size. The speaker is integrated into the flight application. It features two pre-installed siren sounds as well as real-time transmission. So there's a microphone integrated onto the remote. You speak into it and it broadcasts effectively in real time. Speaking of the remote, this is the remote system here. It is referred to as the Hera Link. You can see it has everything needed to operate. Antennas, the control sticks, shortcut control buttons. Again, everything you'd expect out of a remote like this platform. And the integrated, very large and very bright, easy to see in broad daylight screen. On the back, we have two individual batteries that are hot swappable, so those long duration missions are not an issue with the Hera Link and the, and the real-time robotics Hera. So that's an overall look of the basic hardware, the payloads, what you can expect out of this. Now let's get it up in the air and again, give you an idea of what you can expect to see when you're actually operating one of these aircraft on a mission. Okay, so one thing we wanted to show you before we put this up in the air is actually how this drop system works. Again, this orders sequentially, so you have to be a little bit strategic 
about how you want to place your payloads. But the way that it works is actually very simple. We've come up with this mesh bag solution, solution that can stretch depending on the payload that you have in here. And you can place whatever you need. In our example, we have a water bottle, a radio. And in this example, what we have is a small inflatable that you could drop to somebody in some water. It's a very practical solution that we offer here as well. But this is very simple. You place it in the bag, place the locking mechanism on the top, and then simply push it up through the ring until it latches. So our payload is attached. We're ready to go. Now let's get this up in the air and again show you what this actually looks like when the payloads are in operation. All right, so now that we have the aircraft up in the air, we're gonna simulate what this looks like. Obviously, we're not doing a real search and rescue scenario today, but we just wanna give you a practical idea of how these payloads behave and what they look like when they're actually in the air. So now we've located our subject. We're looking at the RGB view right here. We're gonna zoom in on our subject. Now, our recognition here, you can see, has identified that this is a person. Now again, we've been able to zoom into this subject. It's starting to get dark out here. You can see the performance of the sensor is actually very good. All right, now switching over to the thermal view, we've moved our perspective just a little bit. We have a little more delta on our subject. So you can see we're in the white hot color palette right now. And again, we can digitally zoom in on the subject. Again, digital zoom, as you'd expect with a thermal camera, the more we digitally zoom, the more resolution we lose, but that's fairly typical of a payload like this. We can also cycle between different, uh, different color palettes. So we have black hot and a couple of the other ones, again, the typical ones that you would expect to see out of a FLIR thermal core, including isotherms. Now let's switch back to the RGB view. We have an eye on our subject. Let's attempt to establish some type of communication. First, we're gonna get basic communication. Hello, if you can, wave your hand if you can hear me. Okay, so now we've established basic communication. Let's give him some instructions. We have search and rescue teams in the area. We're going to drop some supplies to you, including a radio, so that we can establish communication. Okay, now that we've established this, let's drop a payload to our, to our victim. We're going to drop the payload now. Be careful. You see the payload is dropped. It's like he's retrieving that payload. And now with the radio and other supplies, we're able to establish communication and we can continue to help our subject. All right, so we hope you found this helpful. Again, the idea today is to give you a practical demonstration of what this aircraft looks like when it's actually in the air, how do the payloads behave, and what can you expect to see when they're actually operating. If you have any additional questions about this platform, make sure you reach out to our team at RMUS. Hit us up at sales at rmus.com, or you can hit us at our toll-free number that you can find on our website.